Greetings my chess friends, I welcome you to this chess video and I have a beautiful combative game of chess for you. It's taken from a game played in 1938, the City of London Championship, which of course was played in London, in England. And with the white pieces is a chess player called Frank Parr and with the black pieces is a chess player called George Wheatcroft. And it begins ordinarily enough with the Grunfeld defence. And the idea, of course, is that white builds the centre and black steadily chips away at the centre. You can see this here with this move, c5, e3, knight comes to e2, knight c6, castles, takes, takes, and e5, chipping away at the centre. Well, here black plays, sorry, white rather plays the move d5. Knight goes back and black develops his bishop to a3, pinning the knight against the rook. The rook moves. And knight comes here to this square, c3. And here the queen comes to a5, attacking both the bishop and the knight. Well, white defends. Queen to b3. Here black plays the move e4, trying to take advantage of the long diagonal and the fact that this knight is now attacked twice and defended only once. What do you do when the, if you are white in this position? Do you move your rook to, for example, say c1? Well, here... White played an awesome move, very instructive. He played, in fact, knight takes d5. Saying to black, okay, if you want to take my rook, you can take my rook, but I tell you, you will suffer for doing so. Now, in the game, black actually played the move knight takes d5. But what would happen... If he took the rook, he say he was greedy and materialistic and he thought, well, I'm going to exchange my rook. Well, let's think about it. Bishop takes a1. Rook takes a1. Let's see, knight takes d5 because there would then be a threat on this square here, forking. the king and the rook and then white has an amazing move queen takes d5 the queen is forced to retake and you have a family fork with the knight coming to f6 anyway let's play it out on the board bishop takes a1 rook takes a1 knight d5 trying to shore up the f6 point queen takes queen takes and welcome to the family. So tactically, bishop takes a1 is dubious. But it was also positionally dubious. Because if you play a move like this, well, you're asking for trouble. You have all kinds of weak squares around your king. And there's still a dark square bishop on the board. Very interesting. Black plays knight d5, recognising the consequences of bishop takes a1. Rook came to c1, getting out of the gaze of the bishop. Bishop c5. Creating a discovery against the white queen. Rook came to c5 with threat. Queen moved. The dusky maiden was threatened again. Went to a6. And again threatened by the knight. And here black simply ignores this threat. Plays the move. Knight takes e3. Unleashing this discovery against the queen. Saying to white, okay... 
You want to take my queen? You take my queen. What do you do if you're white? If your queen moves away, you're going to lose the rook. If you take the queen with the, if you let black take your queen, and you, if you take the black queen rather, then black is simply going to take your queen in kind, and more off, more, moreover, you're likely to lose the exchange after the knight takes on f1. And it's for this reason I think that white simply negated the threat with knight takes e6. Black, of course, gobbled the rook. But here white has threats of his own and he played knight to g5. The knight is threatened and the f7 point is threatened. Black must play knight to d2, of course. And the ice maiden came in here on f7. King was forced to h8. And here white developed bishop to d5 with an amazing threat. Saying to black, okay, my rook's on pre, my bishop's on pre, but I have a greater threat. Bishop to d5. Well, let's say that black takes the rook, queen takes b5. Can you see the threat, chess friends? Yep, it's beautiful. Queen to g8, check. Rook takes and knight to f7, checkmate. Beautiful smothered mate. And naturally, black saw this. And instead, he played h6, creating some lift for his king. So what do you do, chess friends? Your rook's hanging, your bishop's hanging, your knight's hanging. You of course play the move, bishop to b3, because it contains a greater threat of checkmate here on g7. Ok, black must do something, so he plays rook to g8. And here, white found this amazing move, queen to d7. Defending the rook and defending the knight indirectly. Because what happens if the knight is taken, chess friends? For example, h takes g5. You will of course find the move queen to h3, checkmate. Let's play it out in the board. h takes g5, queen to g5, queen to h3, checkmate. Because the bishop is pinned against the king. What an amazing move. Queen to d7. It defends the rook and the knight indirectly. Here black played the very sorry. Here black played the very cunning queen to a4. And I wonder if you can evaluate what his threat is. We'll, we'll give we'll give white a rubbish move. We'll say that white plays. I don't know. Bishop takes g8. Can you see black's threat? What happens after the queen comes to d1? Check. The king must move, and after the queen comes to f1, it is what? That's right. Check, mate. Check it out. Queen to d1. King has one square, and queen to f1, and believe it or not, that is checkmate. So naturally, after queen to a4, white must stop this idea and he played the beautiful bishop to b3, negating this threat. Knight takes b3, knight 
knight to f7 check. King is forced to h7. And here, white plays an unbelievable move. I would say an impossible move. He played rook to h5, leaving his queen en prix. Now, chess friends, what happens after rook to h5? I wonder if you can work it out in your mind. Rook to h5. Let's play it on the board. Rook to h5. What happens if queen takes queen? Then we have look for another. Check. We find knight to g5. Check. Of course the knight cannot be taken. The king has to move. And then we get rook takes h6. Checkmate. Let's play it out on the board. Queen takes d7. Knight to g5. Check. King must move. Rook to g6, check, mate. Now, in the actual game, after bishop b3, knight comes to f7, and rook h5, white played the desperado move, sorry, black played the desperado move, queen to a5, but it was too late because after rook takes h6, the game is over. I wonder if you can work it out in your own minds. Rook takes h6, check. Bishop takes h6 and knight to g5 is a double check. And the game is over. Let's play it out on the board. Rook takes, bishop takes, knight to g5, double check. And there's no hiding place. For the black king. What a beautiful tactical game of chess. And it's often advantageous chess friends that when we're playing through games of this is we try and work out the moves in our mind's eye. Trying to visualize what would happen. And I just thought I, I, I just, when I came across this game, I just thought I have to tell my chess friends about this game. It's such a beautiful, combative game of chess. I'm sure they will enjoy it. And I sincerely hope that you did. So that concludes our little chess video, chess friends. I sincerely wish you well with your own chess and I hope you enjoyed this little presentation. Take care and goodbye.